For many of us, turning on airplane mode when we fly has become such a habitual part of the passenger experience, we might not even think about why we do it. I mean, it's in the name, right? It's airplane mode, so it makes sense. Of course, you would do it. You're on an airplane. But why exactly do we put our phones in airplane mode? Airplane mode disables all radio frequency transmissions related to cellular communications. Even when you're not actively using your phone, it is still trying to communicate with radio cell towers. While in an airplane, you're traveling at such high altitudes and speeds that your phone attempts to connect to many different cell towers at a rapid rate, and your phone needs to work a lot harder to reach these towers so it sends an even stronger signal than normal. Cell phones and aircraft navigation systems operate on different bands of the radio spectrum, but David Carson, a Boeing official and co-chair of the RTCA, told ABC News in 2009 that spurious emissions from cell phones could affect avionics. Pilots have reported hearing radio interference, very similar to when you used to be able to hear like a clicking or a buzzing sound from your computer speakers right before you got a cell phone call. Remember that forever ago? The sound can be very distracting to pilots, especially if every phone on board was simultaneously trying to connect and sending out the buzzing sound. And older airplanes may be more susceptible to this interference, but the FAA is still concerned about the chance for interference even in newer planes with better shielding. Now, whether cell phones actually interfere with avionics is still a subject of debate. And to date, there's actually no recorded accidents because of a cell phone, but some pilots have claimed that phones and other PEDs have affected aircraft instruments. According to the BBC in 1999, a passenger's portable DVD player caused a 30 degree deviation in the airplane's heading when it was turned on. This was on a Boeing 727 though, which was a plane that was in use for passenger flights from 1964 to 2019, so a much older plane than what you would see nowadays. And Smithsonian Magazine reported in March 2003, the pilot of a Boeing 737 claimed that the localizer, which is an important piece used for navigation, suddenly showed full deflection, causing him to go a mile off course. Uh, the pilot hypothesized that the cause of the deflection was because he had just announced to passengers that the US had begun attacking Iraq and passengers were likely making phone calls to loved ones. Many cases like these, of course, are anecdotal and have not been repeatable in testing, which makes this a little more troublesome. In October 2013, after a recommendation from an investigatory committee, the FAA allowed the use of cell phones during all phases of flight with airplane mode turned on because newer aircraft are more tolerant of potential electromagnetic interference and passengers can use Wi-Fi instead. In some cases of low visibility, the FAA states that all PEDs could be prohibited on certain flights during takeoff and landing. These periods of the flight have the highest risk for accident because the plane is at its lowest altitude, so there's very little time to recover if a mistake is made, so pilots need to have clear communication with air traffic controller, and of course, the FAA always errs on the side of caution. Due to the potential for disruptions and the possibility of a dangerous situation as a result of miscommunication or incorrect avionics, airplane mode must be enabled. One reason why airplane mode is still required because the tech inside cell phones changes much faster than airplanes do, so officials always want to try to err on the side of caution. Now, I know recently uh, there's been a lot of talk about 5G, which is the new cell phone technology, and how that could potentially interfere with airplanes and the way they operate. And this is because 5G and certain navigational instruments operate on very similar radio frequencies. 5G utilizes what's called the C spectrum which is a range between about 3.7 and 3.98 gigahertz. And an airplane's radio altimeter covers between 4.2 and 4.44 gigahertz. That's only a difference of 0.22 gigahertz between those frequencies. So they don't overlap, but they could get kind of close. The FAA is concerned about this difference because the radio altimeters are used to measure the altitude of the airplane. And it does this by sending a signal to the ground, seeing how long it takes for the signal to come back up, and it times it. If another signal interferes with this process, the radio altimeter could show an incorrect altitude. And typically radio altimeters are used below 2,500 feet or so. So again, lower altitude, less time to recover if there is a problem. And if there was low visibility, when pilots cannot easily see the ground with their own eyes, this could be dangerous. Despite this, other countries have safely flown even with 5G signals close by, so there may soon be a time when 5G can be used near US airports. It's just a matter of testing and making sure everything is as safe as possible. So in a nutshell, that's why you have to put your phone in airplane mode. Sending a quick text likely won't crash the plane, but officials don't want to risk your safety or the integrity of ground networks. If you like information like this or want to hear about any incidents involving aviation, I highly recommend our podcast, Black Box Down. You can listen to it wherever you get podcasts. We like to think of it as a true crime podcast in the sky, finding out what happens when things do go wrong in aviation, which is, of course, the safest form of travel. Again, that's Black Box Down. You can find it wherever you listen to podcasts.